a water get leak this is the usual example we get right and injection means when you are going to inject something when we are ill for example we are lagging some vitamins or something so we get a injection right so because of that our immune system boosts up right so what are leakages the difference between leakages and the injection these flow variables have a negative impact see if water is leaking automatically it's a negative impact so these flow variables have negative impact on the process of production or on the process of income generation right for example from one side you are earning and from other side your money is flowing out so that is a negative impact on your income as well as in the process of production right but injection these cause positive impact on the process of production or income generation right then these are withdrawals from the circular flow of income so whatever income is they are coming leakages means that what a uh, withdrawals it's going out right and injection means these are the addition right you are adding something so these are the addition to the circular flow of income then effect on economy because of leakages what happen first of all reduce flow of income or production and reduce demands of goods and services when you have nothing to produce then nobody will be demanding from your end right but effect on economy of injection is add to the production capacity of the economy so earlier if you are producing 10 chocolate now because of this injection you can produce 20 chocolate right and when you have 20 chocolate then automatically demand will be coming to you right so generate demands of goods and services right so example saving taxation and imports so for example your uh, your income is 100 rupees from this 200 rupees uh, 100 rupees from this 20 rupees you kept as a saving 10 rupees you gave tax and you imported something so you were like you have to pay in return if you are importing something so these are basically the leakages from your income your money is flowing out right but injection are you did investment you did export you did consumption expenditure so all those are basically the injection clear yes ma'am okay so you will be writing difference between leakages and injection and then
Imam dah. Yes, done. Okay. Both of you done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, let's just move to the next part, which is the stock and flow, which is very, very important. Okay. So, stock and flow. So, it is that quantity of an economic variable which is measured at a particular point of time, right? For example, I said on 4th Feb, how much money you had, right? So, that is a stock concept on a particular point of time. But for example, if I say last 5 years, how much money you had? That is basically a period of time. So, it is that quantity of economic variable which is measured during over a specified period of time. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, over here it has no time dimension, right? As its magnitude is measured at a particular point of time. But here it has a time dimension like per day, per hour, per month, per year, right? It has a time dimension. It is a static concept. That means it is a stop up concept, right? That stop and tell me the answer like this. But it is a dynamic concept that it keeps on changing. Maybe previously year you were earning 10,000 rupees. This year you are earning 20,000 rupees. Next year you will be earning 30,000 rupees like this. So it is a dynamic concept. Example, well, water in a tank, bank deposit, capital, 100 rupee note. They are basically the stock concept, but income. Income can be variable like today, like right now I'm working in this company. My income is 1 lakh rupees per month, right? Maybe I'll shift to some other companies over there. My income can be 1.5 to lakh like this, right? And water in a steam. So sometimes due to rain, the steam will be overflowing. But if there is no rain, only the summer season is there, the steam can be dry as well, right? So that is, that keeps on changing. Capital formation, monetary expenditure, consumption of sugar. This a month you were eating less sugar, but next month you can eat more sugar. It is dynamic. It's not fixed that only you will eat one kg of sugar. That's it. Right? You can consume more sugar, less sugar. It is, it keeps on changing. Right? So this is the difference between stock and the flow concept. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am.
Wunderbar. Dann Ma'am, done. Both of you, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now let's just do the other part, right? We have few more differences which we have to learn. So let's just start. So very first, as you are doing with this chapter, so you should know because this is national income, right? So very first thing is that you should know the difference between the domestic income and the national income. Okay, so right now you must be wondering, ma'am, what this formula and all about. Don't worry about that. That I'll tell you. But a basic difference we should know. Okay, so let's just start. Domestic income and the national income. So it refers to the sum of factor income generated by all production units located within the domestic territory. Right, whatever domestic territory you have, if the people who are who are living inside it and they are earning the money, that is your domestic income. Okay, but coming to national income, it refers to the sum of factor income earned by the normal resident of a country within or outside the domestic territory of a country during an accounting year. For example, I am uh, Indian. 
but my job location is in australia so i am working there but whatever sum of money i'll be earning i'll be bringing that to india right so that will be counted in the national income domestic income means the people who are earn, who are inside the domestic territory if they are earning that is basically the domestic income right but national income it is going to include the people who are even they are basically the normal resident of the country and they are working <laughs> they are working outside the india as well you will include them but in domestic territory no matter whether they are indians or not like whether they belong to the that country or not that you are not going to include them clear yes, okay yes. so over yes, here yes. national uh, national domestic ndfc is known as ndfc it is basically nnpa tfc which is national income from this you will net factor income from or to abroad you will subtract that because here you are not including anyone who is living outside but in national income with the <coughs> sorry with the domestic income you will uh, you will add the national income which you are getting from abroad or you are sending it to abroad clear so it does not include nfi like you are not going to include the people who are outside the country but here you will include nfi clear yes ma'am yes ma'am
Đơn mà. Okay. Good. Now coming to the next one. There are two types of good. One is the final good and one is the intermediate good. Okay. So as the name suggests, final good. So final goods are basically, for example, you just bought the cake, right? Of course, from the cake, what you will do, you will consume that, right? So that is basically the final good. These are the goods and services which are used either for consumption by the firm or for the investment by the firm. Right. So over here, for example, I bought a printing machine. Right. From that printing machine, what I'm going to do, I am going to resale it. Right. So that is also I'm going to use it for my final good. So that is basically the final good. But over here, intermediate goods are those goods which help, which are purchased during a year by one production unit for the production of production unit or are either completely used or resold during the same year. Right. So what I did over here. I just bought printing machine. With that printing machine, I can produce the books, right? Or that printing machine, <laughs> I can sell it to someone else. So that is an intermediate good. Clear? So final good is over here. What I did, I just bought something. I just consumed it or I just kept it in my home, right? For example, the printing machine, I just kept it in my home, right? So that is basically the final good. I am only the one who is going to use it, right? But intermediate good, the same printing machine, either I can... Reso is resell it at that time. I am not going to use it finally, right? So that is will be the intermediate good. Or with the printing machine, I'm going to produce print the books and those books I will sell it, right? So that is the intermediate good. Clear the difference? Yes, ma'am. Both of you, um, could you explain it? Okay, see, final goods means that you are the only one that will use it. Okay, for example, you bought chocolate, right? You ate it. So that is basically you consumed it. Nobody else is going to have the chocolate, right? But most of the students get confused between uh, maybe the printing machine. Okay, <laughs> when you bring the printing machine, you just kept it in your study room. You are the only one who will use it, right? So that is your final good. Clear? But like at that time, it will be mentioned that printing machine bought by the household. Household is like we. Right. But intermediate goods are those good either like you are not going to you are not the final consumer for that. Right. You, there are two options. One with whatever you bought with that, you will produce further things. Right. Or you will resell it. You bought it from somewhere and you resell it. Right. So in both the situation, you are not going to use it. Right. For example, printing machine. I am printing the books and the books I'm selling it. So whatever I'm producing with the printing machine, I am not using it. Someone else is using it. So that is intermediate good. Like that machine is being used for the further production, right? Or I just bought that printing machine and I sold it to someone. So again, I'm not using it. Someone else who purchased it, he or she will be using it. So that is also the intermediate good. Final goods, you are the owner and you are using it. That is the final good. Clear? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Now, over here, they do not go undergo any further transformation in the production. You, you bought the chocolate, you ate it. No further transformation, nothing. But here, the transformation takes place. For example, you just bought it to resell. So, you will uh, keep that uh, printing machine in the shop. You will just decorate your shop and you'll just print the posters that, uh, uh, like, I have just recently opened a shop and over there I sell printing machine. So, you have to uh, do some uh, transformation, right? Similarly, if you want to start up with the help of that printing machine, you want to resell the books. You want to print the books. Again, you will have to print a poster that over here, I print the books. Anyone who is interested can visit my shop like this. But over here, for example, you bought the printing machine for your own who use. So over there, you will not print something and you will say, okay, I just bought the printing machine. No, you are definitely going to use it. So no transformation is needed. They are included in the estimation of national income. This will be included in the estimation of national income. They are not included. For example, the printing machine, you are producing the books, 
So over there, books will be counted, not the printing machine. Clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now the question comes yes. over here. For example, you with the help of the printing machine, you are printing the book. So the, whatever books you are printing, whatever amount you are getting, that will be counted. But for example, you sell, you sold that particular thing to someone. Right. So that person who is purchasing that product that for that person, that is a final good. Right. So that will be included in final good, not in the intermediate goods. So intermediate goods, you never include in the calculation of national income, but final goods, you always include in the calculation of national income. See this. Now listen to this, uh, this uh, example very carefully. Milk purchased by a consumer. Okay. Milk purchased by a consumer for immediate consumption. I just bought the milk and I made the milkshake and I drank it. Right. So that is final good. Machine purchased by a firm. So a firm is using the purchasing a machine. Why? Because they need it. Right. But here see coal used in a factory for further production. So because of that coal you are producing something. Right. So that is basically the intermediate good. Milk purchased by a dairy shop for the resale. There is a dairy shop they are, they are also purchasing the milk, but they are reselling it, right? So that is an intermediate good. But when you will purchase milk for your own consumption, that will be the final good. Clear? Yes, sir. So until and unless you don't know the use, you cannot determine whether that is a final good or the intermediate good, right? So use is very, very important. If over here, see, it is mentioned milk purchased by a consumer for intermediate consumption. So you got to know that he will consume it. So you said my final good. But here it is written milk purchased by a dairy shop for resale. Resale. So you automatically it will hit you that ma'am it is an intermediate good. So until and unless use is not given, you cannot determine whether it is a final good or the intermediate good. Clear? Yes. Okay.
ಡನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್